um, sometimes you know you're you're you know you see young women who've gone through rape and sexual violence and they've been abused. And so, but I do think that I felt that these were important stories that everyone should read and know about. So how was your experience? Ida is uh, I, I mean I thought it's great that a TV show is coming up. Uh, DPS men get permission, uh, get these stories on board. So I think Channel B was very cooperative, and I think it's, it was a fantastic idea to actually turn this TV show into a book uh, that people can read and have by their bedside or have by their, you know, and, and have in their library and pick up and read whenever they want to. If this book is available everywhere, it's online, it's every bookstore. So we've spoken about the book. Can we see the promo now? Can we have the promo? Thing we have ever done. Very hard to be so serious for that program. <laughs> Just tell you. It was on crime and everything. So, <laughs> so we, we saw, saw you to inform you that Karan Patel, the show host, could not make it because the doctor advised him he's sick. So we're sorry for that. So it's been four years, five seasons, and we finally have a book. So are we ready for the book launch? Yes. It's an oversized book. So Ira also has given the forward. But Ira, what was your favorite part of the book? And can we have the book reading done? Sure. So I'm going to... Um, I, I'm not sure favorite is the right word with stories that are a little uh, uh, horrific. But um, I'm going to tell you about a short story which I felt was, uh, I don't know, particularly disturbing. Um, maybe because in some ways I could relate to it in my own life. Um, and when I was writing this book, I, when I was writing this particular story, I really somehow felt like I put a little bit of myself in it, at least the background part of it. So the story is called Naz. And the story uh, begins with two teenagers who have lived in the U.S. and they moved back to a small town in Haryana because their father has gotten a new job. So a little bit similar to my background because I too moved from the U.S. to Indore, a small town when I was about the ninth standard. And uh, so, so, so she, she moves to, to, to school, she goes to a junior college, and her brother, and it's very hard for them to make friends because they're these kids, they're from out of town, um, they're very different. All the kids in this town are, are, um, are, are, are pretty you know, small-minded. She doesn't speak Hindi very well. Um, and her brother especially, he was very popular back in the US. He was a very good football player. And he comes back and it's hard for them to make friends. And the brother then falls into some bad company. Um, it's, it's a bunch of four boys, and they have a gang, and they're quite, you know, they're, they're, they're bunking classes, they're always getting into trouble. One of the boys, his father's an important politician, so he, they can't kick him out of school. And so eventually, um, he is, the brother makes friends with these kids, and they're always coming over to his house. And Naz, who is his sister, um, She's happy because she feels, wait, my brother's making friends. Maybe these friends can be my, my friends as well. And so one day when Naz is, she goes out, it's during her exams. Her parents go for a wedding. She can't go because she has to take, some, take her exams. She goes out to pick up a movie. And in those days, um, you know, you had those movie rental shops. So she goes out to pick up a movie to watch at a study break. And she bumps into these four boys. And when she comes back, um, you know, she, they, they sort of invite themselves over to her house, these four boys, and they say, can we come over to watch the movie? And she says, okay, and when, they, when she does invite them, they start acting funny. You know, as she watches the movie, and there's no one at home. Her parents and her brother have gone for the wedding, and then um, they rape her. They rape her that, that, that night, and she's, when her parents come back, she's too embarrassed to tell them. 
what has happened, and she goes into a into a depression. So, um, and this is a true story. So I'm going to just read a little bit of, of that section. So this is, the story is told from two points of views, her brothers and hers, and so this is Naz. And Naz means pride, so the, so the story also means how her, her own pride was broken um, by, by the injustice that was done to her. For days I was numb, unfeeling. I felt as if I were stuck in a nightmare that I hoped would end very soon. But it was unending, and the more I moped, the more I kept to myself, the deeper I sank into depression. I didn't want to tell anyone or talk to anyone. I only wanted to be by myself, alone, because a part of me kept on saying that the nightmare would end soon. But it didn't. It just got darker and darker, till one day, even though I'd said that I would not, I told A.B. everything. A.B. is her brother. Once I did, I felt as if a huge weight was lifted from my shoulders, but I was also more scared. What would happen now? A.B. was shocked, angry, violent, sad. He broke down and holding his head in his hands, he blamed himself for everything, for befriending those criminals, for bringing them home, for his poor judgment. But unlike me, despite being devastated, he took action, beginning by telling my parents. Papa did not want to go to the police, he did not trust them. He thought that we should deal with it ourselves, instead of turning it into a public scandal handled by inept authorities. Mom, on the other hand, was both livid and crying at the same time, put her foot down and told him that she would move heaven and earth to make sure that those boys got sentenced and that to happen we had to seek redress and get justice. And justice we did get. Within weeks, all four boys were charged with rape. Nab, Arjun and Rakshay were sentenced to lifetime terms in prison. Ronak, who was below 18, was sent to a juvenile correction, correction center. The judge, a kind old lady, assured us that she would ensure that he got his due punishment, though it looked unlikely at the present moment. In one way, I was satisfied with the outcome of the trial, but in another, I knew that it didn't really matter because something fundamental within me had been destroyed. And no one, no lawyer, no judge, no arm of justice could ever restore that. You know, also in this story are a little bit, little elements of the Nirbhaya rape case, you know, um, and that's why I had one character who was sentenced to a juvenile facility. So, um, several of the stories are, are a little disturbing, but, but, they're, but they're important stories to read, and they are educational, and, um, and they're quite gripping, you know, I'm not saying that these are really dark and you're going to get depressed if you read them, don't think that, you know. They are, pretty, they, are, they are pretty gripping, they are pretty thrilling, and I do think that, that especially if you like crime stories, um, these, are, these are exciting to, to read as well. Interesting. So you've given the best part of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'll basically give the essence of the forward rather than reading it word for word. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, the purpose of this book is not to scare you. It's a little scary, but that's uh, because the stories are, uh, but all human beings have a need to socialize. We are social animals. Some animals are not social, but we are. So we have a big need to be part of a community, know people, have lots of friends, acquaintances, all that in our life. But at the same time, we have another need to feel safe, to feel very secure. And I think that's the contradiction because we want to be out there having a lot of people into our lives, but we also want to feel safe. And that's the balance I think sometimes a young person is not able to figure out. Especially when they're young adults, they've just grown up. So, you know, you may have a girl who's like, oh, he's just my friend. And everybody who laughs with her is a friend or it's a guy who could trust somebody like that. But balancing that safety versus the need to socialize, that's the essence of, uh, you know, where the aim is to make sure youngsters try to make the right call. The signs are always there. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. So that's, I think when I, when I saw the show and also the stories, it was this only. Most, uh, mostly it was people, uh, people who did the crime who you know. And uh, it's just a case of why they trusted them. And I think you have to be learn to be careful on who you give your trust to. You can't trust anyone and everyone in life. You should trust, it doesn't mean trust no one. I would not say trust no one. 
but that balance, that ability everybody needs to have and these days with technology it's getting even worse because you know people can intrude into your lives through WhatsApp, through mm -hmm. Facebook, everything and before you know it you feel that they are in your life and you feel like you know them, you feel like you can trust them but maybe not. There was a case recently in the papers I saw 19 days a girl had known a guy in Bangalore and a proper like she worked in a software company, the guy also worked in something, he came and he murdered her and left and it was just bizarre and otherwise without Facebook this would have not happened but it's here to stay, these technologies are here to stay so we have to learn to, how to manage them it doesn't mean that someone that presses a like on your picture they like you or they can be trusted, you know, it can be very different and also I think we have to keep in mind, especially as women, especially as young women especially women who are going out to work, out to study you know, it's not like the olden days where, um, you know, you, you, you know, I remember my mother or my grandmother, she never left home without someone, uh, you know, like her brother, her father, someone going with her. But now, we don't want that. You know, even as young women, we want to be independent, we want that freedom. But there is, you know, we have to be careful. And our safety is in our own hands. You know, we can't blame the government or the CM and, you know, and, and the media and Yehua, Kibohua, no. Our safety is in our hands and we have to take precautions. I remember um, when I was in, um, when I lived, when I was in business school, I lived in New York and I lived in Harlem, which was the, one of the most dangerous parts of town because our business school was close by. And literally at night, I could sometimes hear gunshots, you know, hear sirens going off. And I was a student and I took public transportation. I was taking the metro, I was taking the you know, buses. And at all times, I used to carry with me pepper spray. It was attached to my room keys. You know, it was attached to my keychain with some pepper spray saying, you know, this is for safety because, you know, you never know in those underground stations at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. And you have to be careful. Like even, I, I live in Delhi and, and I feel ashamed to say this, but after 9 p.m. in Delhi, I don't take taxis. I even try not to go out on the streets. If I'm going out for a walk or something, I make sure my phone is fully charged. I make sure someone knows where I'm going. So these are things that we have to, you know, when, we, when we're young, we think we're invincible. You know, we really think that nothing or no one can harm us. But it just takes one incident. It takes one fraction of a second for a crime to happen. So I really think, especially as young women, you know, we have to protect first and foremost ourselves. And that is the message that this book is trying to impart. You and the book looks really interesting. Looking forward to it. Are we looking forward to the book? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the book launches now everywhere. Online, you have e-books, you have... We have a message. Unfortunately, Karan Patel couldn't make it, but we have a message. But, can you play that round? best confidence, do I love to be there. But unfortunately, my health does not permit me to be there with you guys. But nonetheless, all my best wishes with you and uh, I'm sure Bumra is going to get only better and so even higher heights than what it already is. And all the best for the book launch and um, I'll try and make it up to you guys. Sorry. Thank you once again. Thank you, Karan. We missed you. So with the first question coming in from there. Hi Chetan, Hi. Ali from Movie Talkers. My question is to you: Like you like you said, ki, it's more difficult to do the acting. So do you feel is acting is more difficult? For me, it is. I think it depends on person. For me, uh, for for actors, hopefully, writing is more difficult. And uh, I find it very very difficult. Whenever I, I can talk live on stage for a long time, I find acting very difficult. And I one other thing I found only once I've done in my life is to walk the fashion show ramp. I thought it was very easy, you just walk, but I've never felt like, you know, you just feel like, who are you? You're like a commodity, like a zoo animal or something. I felt like everybody's looking at you and they're just looking at what you're wearing. So, <laughs> I, I, I found I found it very difficult. But your book, like, so many books, like every book, during the, uh, their movement, they're making a movie. In teacher, can I always see you in an acting also? No, no. Because, you know, Bandar or Madari ke khel mein Madari banna hi better hai. So, I'd rather be the guy who controls with the writing. I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, it's not something I... In fact, I've been offered once, but I didn't. Because I knew that I'll be the only one in the audience. <laughs> so, I didn't.
Okay. Okay. By the way, before you go on further questions, we all believe India is very tolerant. And <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure every book launch something like this happens. Some lit we all believe India is very tolerant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, it's Nikita from Lemon News. First of all, my question is for Irahan. Ma'am, uh, first of all, congratulations for your book. Ma'am, I have to ask you a question. show hai, Kumra, it's a brand in itself. So, how uh, is concept in your mind that I have to write a book? Likhna? I think it was a collaborative project. Tha. So, um, we all have thought about it. If we make a story, if we write a book, then it will become immortal. So, that's why Channel B um, is very much in the book. And I knew someone from the channel, they said, Ira, do you have any ideas for Gumra? And I said, yes, I think that this would be a good idea. Then I said, let's try to bring Chetan or someone on board to help us with it. And then this would be a good idea. Then I said, let's try to bring Chetan or someone on board to, to make this into even more of a collaborative project. So, I, being a writer, I really feel as if, um, you know, when you put something down in a book, it has an eternal life. You know, movies, I know Archkal movies, with not jala hype hypo, TV shows, and, you know, but, but a, book is, a book is a book. You know, and kafi log bole lage ki, you know, with this, uh, I don't know, kisi ne phone book ab chalu kar diya hai or something or whatever, and e-books, but I still feel like a physical book is something sacred. You know, I really feel this. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm happy to have made, helped make Gumra from, from sort of virtual reality to now actual reality and uh, to make something sacred out of this. Thank you, ma'am. Chetan ji, my question is that ma'am is a book, okay. You have also some books in Revolution 2020, 2020, and there are also books. So sir, will you see upcoming books in the upcoming books? I am going to write October in Diwali. So I can't tell much details, but it's a novel. And I'm writing from a woman's point of view this time. So trying to do something different. It's very difficult. So Chetan ji and Ira ji, if I ask you a short message, what would you like to give to the youths? And what would that be? I would like to say, in context of this book, um, again, my message, I do a lot of work on this, I do a lot of activism on this, is a young woman's safety is in her own hands. You know, she is first and foremost responsible for her own self and her own body. So take that power, embrace that power, and do what you can to protect yourself. And it's, it's, it's really the need of the hour, you know, the need of the hour, because I'm on the field, you know, I see what's happening, I, I, I look at these cases, I write about these cases, I'm, I'm there, you know, and so I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I go to the jails, I talk to these criminals, I talk to the, go to the courts, so for, for my work I do this, and, and therefore I, I see a picture that maybe a lot of you don't get to see about what the reality is, and therefore for that I feel that, that really that is, that is my message, especially to, 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 to the young women in the audience. Did it rebuff from yeah, I think she basically some said it better than, I mean, safety first today, that's that's what, and not just for women, men also can get, I mean, of course, women face it much, much more, but it, there are many times, uh, it's not even about harm done to them. A boy can get into bad company. They can join friends who are doing crime. They don't know what is cyber crime. They don't know what is drugs. What is, it's, there are many, many things, even a, uh, even a male can be gumra. And, uh, you know, so that's also a 